aha, the swipe file shuffle. If, if copywriters, <laughs> if writers write to copywriters, it's copy. Yes, we do. I actually don't know who said that, but yeah, copywriters do copy. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, quite a bit more than I realized. Uh, I've been doing it the hard way for a long time, like creating it all. Whereas I found out uh, Dan Kennedy actually just takes all his old stuff and puts it together like Frankenstein stuff. Now, he's been doing it for a really long time, so he can get away with it. But um, yeah, copying, getting inspired, taking the assembly of other people's words and, and transposing it onto your own information is perfectly acceptable in copywriting. It, it, it is not plagiarism, as long as you're not copying word for word. That is not cool. And uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes said to take someone else's idea and claim it for your own is stealing, but to take ideas from two or more sources and combine them, that's creativity. And of course, William Shakespeare, there is nothing new under the sun. And truly, there's not. You're just finding new ways to get people's attention. So this, the swipe file shuffle, I thought I had a picture of that. What, you, what I'm recommending that you do with swipe files, they're called swipe because you're swiping them and, and you're putting them in, in like a, a folder or a binder or something. But what a swipe file actually is, is, is taking someone else's copy that resonates with you, whether it's in a magazine, whether it's in a newspaper, a website, email, your junk mail. That was one of the ways I really got my copywriting skills going, was by, seriously, by collecting my junk mail. Why? Those people spend billions of dollars to field test that stuff, and it does work. Now, will it work in your market? You're going to have to test that and see. But there, you can learn things from the way, say, American Express tries to market to you, or the way Reader's Digest tries to market to you. These are, these are companies that make their living selling to us. Um, pay attention to what you see when you're in the grocery store, the magazines on both sides of you. Those, that's prime real estate. What, what's next to you when you're standing in line? Because you're standing there with nothing else to do. So if you're faced with the National Enquirer and you're faced with, um, with, with Men's Health or Cosmo, that's because those are the things that sell. Pay attention to the kinds of headlines that they use because those are the things that work. And re, reposition them. Even though they're, these are magazines, they still work online or offline. The same concepts work either way. So piles of files. This is what I was just talking about. What is in, what, what's in your face when you're in the grocery line? So there, there's all of these kinds of things. The news, the Wall Street Journal, Esquire, uh, Reader's Digest. I have, uh, I actually have to throw away magazines. I, I get them all. I order them all. I read them. And I, then I have them. I keep them for as long as I can. But they take up a lot of space. So after a while, I think about going through them and ripping out the ads that resonate with you. Um, look for those dense copy ads that are in the back. Because like John Carlton was saying yesterday, it's, it's believe it or not, those things really, really do work. Dense copy. It, it's sort of like it's the offline version of, of the long copy that it's, it's not pretty. <laughs> it's not necessarily pretty, but it does work. It's much more effective than like a, a big picture of a watch it, and that says imagination or something. What, it, what? <laughs> what? What does that mean? So you need to just pay attention excuse me, to stuff that's working and mimic it. Start saving the piles of files and go through them and, and rip out the stuff that works for you. And I'll, t I'll give you a little organizational tip that I do with mine um, when I actually go through the magazines because I let them pile way up before I actually figure out that I, it's time to go through them. But get these big Ziploc bags. You can get at Smart and Final. They actually have really big ones. I think they're, what are they, two quarts? Two quart. Yeah, they're super big. And um, Start collecting your, your stuff and stick it in there and write um, what, is it health related, if it's uh, whatever industry that you're collecting swipe files for. And don't just collect in your industry, though. Do collect in other people's industries that, uh, that resonate with you. Now, as a copywriter, of course, I, I do collect for lots of different industries. But I still find that, that what works, like in the diet market, actually also works in like the beauty market. So it's interesting. Kyle? Phenomenon with certain oh, um, like National Enquirer. For, it doesn't get me at all. But something else is there's some 
meter that helps you define, is that just the target market? I mean, it's not just the target market. I mean, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I mean, you, you probably don't read the National Enquirer, and, and I, I don't either in public. <laughs> but um, it's one of the highest selling magazines. So it, it may not be your target market, but it's, they know how to write attention getting copy. So even if it's not your target market, you know, just see what works and what doesn't. You'll, of course, you'll test, but it's a good, good clarification. Okay, this is, a, this is a bunch of stuff. This is all in your binder as well, so if, if you're having a difficult time seeing it. This is how to make a swipe file. Um, the, the direct mail letters, including the envelopes and the inserts, like if you open up, let's say something from Columbia House, you don't just have the one letter, you have the reply envelope and, and uh, all kinds of things are gonna fall out all over your floor. So pay attention to all those steps because they're very deliberate. None of it is by accident. So just study it. I'm, just, I'm not suggesting you necessarily copy it, but study it so you know it. Um, postcards that you get that, that catch your attention. There's a site called magazines.com. If you're writing copy, you definitely want to know magazines.com because it's got whatever the top magazine, or well, all the magazines for that month, the cover is on magazines.com, so you don't even have to buy them all. You can just look at the headlines that you'll see online. Um, trade magazines, whatever your industry is, you want to be getting those magazines. You want to be getting the the uh, magazines that everybody else is reading. And the, if you wanna, don't want to buy National Enquirer, you can go to nationalenquirer.com and just get stimulated, uh, uh, look at the way they put some of their words together. Rodale magazines, Rodale Publishing House is one of the big, the big boy publishing houses where they do Reader's Digest, Men's Health, Prevention, and Boardroom Publishing at boardroom.com. They talk about uh, health and money. It's definitely something that you should look at for, um, for health, both of those, Rodale and Boardroom. Actually, I don't have Agora up here, but Agora, A-G-O-R-A, uh, I don't know if it's .com, but Agora Publishing, do a Google on that. They also are, are big, big copywriting, direct mail sales uh, publishing house. Look at newspaper headlines, collect those, uh, check out what works in USA Today. USA Today is almost like a magazine, so it, it's definitely, it, it, it hits the, the general market. The Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, and if you see an internet website that is a, com a competitor or is in an industry that resonates with you, just print it out, because you're probably not gonna go back. You can bookmark them, you're probably not gonna go back. Print it out, put it in your swipe file, and when it comes time to sit down and write your copy, you're going to page through that stuff, and, and it will inspire you, and uh, it'll get you started. It's a much better way to kickstart rather than just going front to a plate. That's so painful. And now the index card, index cards. You have these in front of you. These little. I I always have um, these. I carry with me. If you see like billboard or even a bench, uh, you know, like a part, like um, bus benches and stuff that they advertise on, then write, write down stuff that resonates with you and, and keep track of it. Or if you hear a conversation, take notes because you won't remember. And it, it's, it's um, a really great way to just flip back through. It's portable and it's easy. Um, oh yeah, radio stations, that's the other thing. AM radio, they are like direct marketing of the, uh, of the airwaves, so pay attention. <laughs> Speaky's on, air, on AM radio. So um, keep this with you. I had another thought and it just went whoosh, about the index cards. Well, what's that? Oh, there you go. I need the pen. There you go. Get the pen. Forget the index cards. Uh, it'll come back to me. It's gone. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. The places that you're advertised in the grocery store. Uh, when you guys go to the grocery store, what are some of the places that they put copy? Where do they, how do they reach you? Just shout it out. Lately, they've been putting it on the floor. Yeah, yeah. They put it on the floor. Yeah, exactly. When you're pushing the carts, the little cards on the, the this, shelves. This right, the coupons that have flashing lights at you, 
And then when you're in line besides the magazines, don't. Uh, it depends on what store you're in, but they'll have. Oh, right, the divider things. That's right, they stick coffee on there too. You're right. Uh, they'll have a. Some of them have TVs where they'll actually show you ads and stuff while you're waiting. I notice they do that at uh, at the coffee bean. They ha and I probably at Starbucks too, right? They have. They're doing. They're, they're always trying to reach you. So there's uh, Susan. Tell me that statistic again that you that you heard. The statistic states. That okay, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. For the mic. It's it's so like dramatic. This is a statistic that really blew me away. It stated that today each of us on a daily basis is bombarded with more um, print, TV, radio music, one-on-one -on -one conversation, and those types of things that get in our face with offers, promotions, things like that, on, in one day than our great-grandparents got in an entire year. And wow. we have to decipher through all oh, of wow. that what's important to us and what isn't. And the majority of it is deciphered through your subconscious mind. Wow, thank you. Yeah, so that, that's why you know you're here. Your copy's gotta, gotta jam, it's gotta be good. Uh, and this is the other recommendation. This is also in your, in your binders. Read the masters. Read read the great copywriting books that are that are old, um, oldies but goodies. <laughs> the tested advertising methods. This is on my my shelf, and I, I'm telling you, it is still. It's like you know, Think and Grow Rich is from the early 19 whatever. <laughs> it's old, right? 1936. Thank you. 1936. It was before I was born. <laughs> We believe you. <laughs> it was before Luann. Um, but it, it's, it's a classic, and they, they, these people have information that still applies today. It's amazing, but it does. It's timeless stuff. Um, Breakthrough Advertising, that happens to be my most favorite advertising book. It's by Eugene Schwartz. It was out of print for a while. It's now back in print. It's a $97 book, but it is good. It's really good. Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins. That's in the public domain. You can get it easily um, through a search online. My Life in Advertising by Claude Hopkins. Triggers by Joseph Sugarman. That's sort of like what inspires you into action, what makes you want to buy. Advertising Secrets of the Written Word by Joe Sugarman. I just like Joe. <laughs> his, his stuff is awesome. He, he actually... He's a great storyteller. Uh, he, he did the blue blocker sunglasses that were really popular for a while. Um, yeah, he's, he's... He uses Kasicha? Oh my gosh. So he uses Susan's product. That's cool. And his 18-year-old wife does too, yeah. right? <laughs> um, billion dollar... <laughs> Billion Dollar Marketing by Maxwell Sackheim. The Robert Collier Letter Book, that should be in everyone's library. That's a really good thing to, um, to get ideas from. The Greatest Direct Mail Sales Letters of All Time. These are swipe files that you can have on your shelves. If you, if, uh, of course, I want you to continue like collecting recent ones, too. But this is the stuff that's classic. It's, it doesn't go out of style. Uh, and you know why it doesn't go out of style? Because w our minds haven't changed. Even though we're bombarded with the technology, we're bombarded with um, advertisements and things, we still act like cave people, basically. We have very basic emotions uh, as far as how, what triggers us, believe it or not. We're going to talk more about that later, too. But it, that's why the stuff that from 100 years ago, it still works today. The languaging is a little different, but the concepts still work. Oh, the million dollar mailings, the first hundred million, uh, Ogilvy on advertising by David Ogilvy. He's from the 60s. How to Make Maximum Money in Minimum Time by Gary Halbert, if you can find it. And it, actually, TWIPress.com has all of these. They're, they're older books, so a lot of them are harder to find. But it's TWIPress.com. It's in your binder as well. And that they, have, they have all this stuff. So build your libraries. And, and use them, even if you don't sit down and, and read before you go to bed, use them as, as a, a resource just to flip through when you're sitting down to write. It'll, it'll free up the cobwebs out of your mind, I promise. Yes? The Robert Collier letter book, I'm assuming, is by Robert Collier? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess I should add that next time. <laughs>